Welcome back to the channel of Ecoholics. So in this video, I will be solving a numerical on ISLM, which is going to help you in a lot of examinations. Since ISLM is one of the most important topics of every economic related examination. So let's get to the question. So it's a four sector model in which we are given with the consumption function C equals to 60 plus 0.8 YD, where YD is my disposable income. The investment is given as I equals to 100 minus 5I. Interest rate is also given to me. Then we are given with government expenditure, lump sum taxes, transfer payments, exports, and this is the import function which is given. So this point 2 over here in the import function is my marginal propensity to import. Similarly, point 8 over here is my marginal propensity to consume. So we have to first find out the equation for IS curve using this given data. So whenever you have to solve for the IS equation, the best and the simplest trick is to solve for the equilibrium in the goods market. And the Keynesian model, it is given by where Y equates to aggregate demand. So whenever you will equate your Y equals to AD, you're going to get the equation for IS. This is the most simplest trick we have. Correct? Now, the thing is, if you will observe the data given on the previous slide, interest rate is given to me. So if I input that interest rate, will I be able to get IS curve? No. So again, let me share one more important trick over here. So in most of the questions in paper, which you get, you have to find IS equation and you're already given with the interest rate. So when you equate Y equals to AD, you think, okay, I'm not getting an equation in terms of Y and I because I've already input my I key value. So I just get directly the value for Y, but that is not what you have to do. So even if you're given the value of I, don't substitute that value when you're solving for the equation of IS curve. Just start with Y equals to AD and proceed further. Don't put the value of I and don't put the value of Y. Only then you're going to get the equation. So let us see how we are going to proceed in this question over here. Now, we are given the consumption function. So let me first solve for the equilibrium of goods market, which is equal to Y equals to AD. So aggregate demand over here is going to be equal to C plus I plus G. But since we have an open economy here, so I need to input net exports as well. So they will be equal to X minus M. So let's just put the values. Now one thing over here, we are given with disposable income. So we mostly take disposable income like this, ki Y minus T. But we have one more factor over here, component, which is the transfer payment. So transfer payment is that one-sided payment which you are getting without, might be without providing services or any other good. So it's just a transfer from one person to the another. So that is also a part of your disposable income. So because we are given this component here, so I will be adding the transfer payments to get to my disposable income in this question. So I'm going to put the values 60 plus 0.8 for disposable income Y minus taxes, which are equal to 15 plus transfer payments, which are equal to 60 over here. So 60 plus I, what is investment? 100 minus 5I. So 100 minus 5I. After that, I need to put the value of exports, which will be equal to, which are equal to 70, given to me over here. So 70 minus imports, which are equal to 12 plus 0.2Y. So plus 12 minus 0.2y because we had a subtraction sign so the things will get negative right now we have substituted all these values i'm going to solve it how am i going to solve it all the values which will be related to y like here i'm going to get 0.8y here i'm getting 0.2y i will be taking them to the other side so that I will be collecting the Y terms on the left hand side and I will be keeping the I related terms and the constant terms on the right hand side. After this, I will be getting Y, 0.4 Y actually, because when I will subtract all these things, equals to 330 minus 5 I. 
So I have got this thing now. But I want an equation for the IS curve. Never leave the things like this. Always, always make the constant or the deter the coefficient of y equals to 1. So if I do that, I have to divide the right hand side with the 0.4. So if I do that, 0.4 is nothing. It is 4 by 10. So 4 by 10 is 2 by 5 y equals to 330 minus 5 i. Right. So if I take this to the other side, I will be getting 330 into 5 by 2 minus 5 into 5 by 2 i over here. So upon solving this, I will be getting 165 into 5, which will be minus 12.5 i. So y will be equal to 25 over here, 32, 38, 25 minus 12.5 i. So this is my equation for IS curve. So let me write it here. All right. So y equals to 825 minus 12.5 i is my equation for IS curve. See how simple it is just to get the value of IS curve, the equation of IS curve over here. All right. Now, the next part demands us to find the value of equilibrium level of income. Now, equilibrium level of income, they're not even talking about the LM curve. So we have to find equilibrium level of income from this portion only. How are we going to get it? If you remember, I told you one thing in the start of this video that we are given with interest rate, but we don't have to substitute it when we are finding the equation of I S. but you can substitute it now. So I will be just putting the value of I over here and I will be getting the value of my Y. So Y will be equal to 750 after solving this. So this is the answer to part B where I have solved for the value of equilibrium level of output. Now there is one more part in this question which asks you to calculate the foreign trade multiplier. Now what is foreign trade multiplier? So in foreign trade multiplier, we have to find out that okay if my imports are changing because here the exports are exogenous they are not in your control they are just a fixed number so they are not going to impact the income also because the exports are going to depend on foreign countries income because it's the consumption of their people we will treat that as autonomous now, because they're asking about foreign trade, so it means they're talking about import multiplier. So we have to work with the import multiplier. So how do we get import multiplier? That is the question. Now, to get import multiplier, we just need a very simple trick. So how do we get it? Y equals to C plus I plus G plus X minus M. So again, putting the values over here, I get 60 plus 0.8 Y minus T, which is 15 plus transfer payment, which is 60 plus investment, which is 100 minus 5I. So you can put 6 over here. After that, you have to put the value of government expenditure, which is 76 plus exports which are 70 minus 0.21 like this. So what you have to now do is if you have a look at this equation, it's just in terms of y or it's just in terms of the constant over here. Now tell me one thing, what usually happens is whenever the imports will change, it will be fact affecting the income over here because of marginal propensity to import and also the income is going to affect at this point, correct? So because of this reason, if we derive the value of foreign trade multiplier, that is the import multiplier, the value of import multiplier in Keynesian, under Keynesian is one upon one minus MPC plus marginal propensity to import. This is the value of the foreign trade multiplier over here, right? 
So if I put the value, what is the value of MPC? It's 0.8. So 1 minus 0.8 is 0.2. And what is the value of marginal propensity to import? It's again 0.2. So I get the answer 1 upon 0.4. So I'm going to get 1 upon 0.4 will be equal to 2.5. So this is the value of import multiplier or foreign trade multiplier over here. So this is the answer to part C in this question. So this was the solution to the ISLM numerical. If you want more such videos, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Also let us know the other topics on which you want video from us. Thank you for watching.